Thank you very much. So uh, first, thank you for uh, uh, letting me talk here. And this is a joint work with Andrew Sale. And what I'm going to talk about is uh, outer automorphisms of right angle arting groups. And uh, I will investigate which of them are vast and which, are, which of them are not. Um, OK, so let me first uh, remind you what's a, what's a right angle arting group. OK, so that's, that's uh, you'll start with a, a finite graph, gamma. with vertex set uh, x1, xn, and you, you uh, construct a very, uh, very uh, simple group, very easy presentation. You, you put a relation, a commutation relation, whenever there is an edge. Okay, so. Okay, so that, that's a rag. So, um, so rags are uh, you know, very uh, important these days because uh, you can embed many groups in, in rags. Um, that's not my, uh, what I'm going to talk about at all. I'm, I'm going to talk about automorphism groups of these rags. Okay. Um, and uh, so the easiest examples of rags are, for instance, the free group. Fn, you just take a bunch of vertices, but no edge. You, could, you take z to the n, you take a bunch of vertices, and you put all the edges. And, uh, but there are more, many more. I, can, I don't know if you can do a direct product of free groups. You can take free product of abelian groups, but many more. Okay. And, um, Okay, so the, what I will be interested with is uh, the group uh, out. Oh, I, I need a notation for this group. Uh, we'll denote it by A gamma. Okay, so given a fine graph, the RT group corresponding to that is A gamma. And I want to um, talk about out of A gamma. Um, which is just okay, the group of all automorphism modulo inner. Uh, examples include I mean at the extremes of the spectrum uh, out of Fn and GLN is out of okay. And so in some sense, uh, those groups here, this family of groups, interpolates between uh, out of Fn and between uh, G and Z. And, um, and uh, I want to, uh, to draw a, a frontier, a boundary, between groups we have a, a, a large behavior and those which don't. Okay, and uh, that's, that's the goal of the talk. So in which sense, uh, larger or vast, okay? So, um, ways in which, which uh, out of Fn is larger, or I would say vaster than um, okay, so for some, those groups are, are, are not, uh, they, they, they are, they are not um, small, they contain three groups, okay, um, but, but what the, the, the way I want to, to uh, the, the, the kind of, of bigness or large, largeness I want to, um, to, uh, to, in, 
to investigate is, is something that uh, well, not be well behaved with respect to subgroups, but with respect to quotients. So for instance, one way in which out of Fn is uh, vaster than GLNZ is uh, that there is an epimorphism. Okay, canonical uh, epimorphism just by looking at the action of an automorphism on its abelianization. Okay, uh, so th this is a first way, the very basic way in which out of Fn is vaster than uh, GLNZ. But there are, there are um, uh, deeper, deeper ways. So uh, here, here, here are three other ways. More interesting. Uh, the first one is, is about, uh, it's a profanite uh, property. So it's about involving all finite groups. So, um, so here's the definition. A group, a finite variety generated group involves all finite groups if for every finite group F where well, there is a finite index subgroup of G that maps onto F. Okay, definition, and uh, for this property, uh, out of Fn behaves very differently than uh, GLNZ. So um, here is, a, for instance, here is this theorem by um, and read, and that's for the mapping class group by Novad. Gotsky for out of Fn is that out of Fn and the mapping class group of a surface, um, probably sufficiently uh, large, involve all finite groups. Here, obviously, uh, okay. And on the other hand, a theorem I don't uh, exactly know uh, the whom to attribute it. Um, probably, uh, it's related to uh, the congruence subgroup property. Uh, let, let me. Uh, that's um, so for n three uh, g l n z does not groups okay so um For n equals two, uh, things are very different. Okay, uh, okay. GL two Z is actually the same as or isomorphic to out of F two, and uh, is uh, is virtually free. So it it, it does involve all finite groups. Uh, Okay, so maybe I should have said so. Uh, the, the basic example of a, of a group that involves all, all finite groups is a free group F2 because if you take a finite cover, you can get three groups of arbitrary rank and so you can map onto every finite group you want. Um, here is, uh, so that's the first way um, 
in which uh, out of Fn is larger, or vaster than uh, GLNZ. Here a second way, it's called SQ universality. A group G is said SQ to be SQ universal. So SQ stands for sub quotient. So if any countable group A embeds in some quotient of E. This says that this group is very far from being simple. It has, uh, if it's finitely generated, it implies that it has uh, uncountably many quotients. Okay. Um, and here, again, there is a, a big difference between uh, uh, GL and Z and our Fn. So uh, theorem is that uh, mapping class groups and out of Fn are SQ universal. Uh, uh, Damani, myself, and Dennis Osin. And on the other hand, if you are uh, wondering what's going on for uh, GLNZ, well, uh, there is a marvelous normal subgroup theorem which tells you that any quotient of uh, GLNZ is uh, is either by a, by a, either you, you made up by a, a central subgroup, so it's uh, you, you don't do anything, or or it's it the the quotient is finite. So, uh, well, any normal subgroup. of say PGLN has finite index or trivial, okay. In particular, it's very far from being uh, SQ universal. Okay. So that's for n at least three. Okay, that's a higher rank phenomenon. Uh, here is a third way. Third way involves uh, quasimorphisms. So, well, uh, should I define? Yeah. Uh, homogeneous morphism is a map from G to R such that it's a quasimorphism, meaning that H of G H minus H of G H of, well, no, that's not good. <laughs> is bounded by a constant C. Okay, and homogeneity is just uh, Okay, this is related to bounded cohomology and um, say that, uh, okay, let's say that for this talk that G has many uh, quasimorphisms uh, if well if uh, so th this is a this is a real vector space you can add uh, a quasimorphism you can multiply by a real number and so um, you, you want the, the dimension of this set of homogeneous quasimorphism uh, to be infinite the dimension R of this set is infinite. 
So if you, your group is finitely generated, there are only, obviously, a, a, a morphism, a, a morphism from G to the additive group R is, a, is one of those, but there can be only finitely dimensional of true morphism. So if there are an infinite dimensional set of quasi-morphism, then there are kind of exotic ones. And here again, there is a huge difference between out of Fn and SLNZ. So theorem, so here, yeah. Fain and Vesvina uh, Fujiwara. Out of Fn and the mapping class group of a surface are have many busy morphisms. On the other hand, this is not true for GL and Z. So I think this is due to then there is a more general uh, new 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 man. Human, sorry. Uh, there is also a more general version, which says that uh, G and Z, well, in fact, I think he, uh, it has absolutely no non trivial homogeneous. Um, all these three properties, these three largeness properties, like so involving all finite groups, being XQ universal, having many quasimorphisms, they are they are inherited by by quotient. So if you map onto a group that has one of these largeness properties, this vastness property, then the, the group you started with also uh, inherits this property. And that's uh, an obvious fact. Um, there, is, there is the, the I don't know, the strongest form of, of uh, vastness, which, is called, which has a name, it's called being large. is large if uh, it virtually maps onto a free group. It has a finite index subgroup G0 in G such that G0 maps onto the free group F2. That's largeness. And this, this largeness property implies all the three properties I, 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 I proved, I proved, I mentioned, sorry. Um, and uh, what is, so maybe examples, uh, uh, it's uh, known that, well, out of F2 or which is the same as uh, GL to Z is large. I mean, just because it's virtually free, um, it's known that out of F3 is large. This is due to, um, to uh, Grunewald and Lubotsky. This is not known for out of Fn or N larger. And it's known that uh, uh, ln z is not large for n greater at least three. Well, maybe because it has property t, or because of all those other reasons. All right. All right. So this largeness property is the strongest. Uh, 
vastness property in some sense. Okay. It's strongest, it implies all the three um, properties. So, so maybe I should write notes. These properties are inherited. Okay, uh, so the picture of the goal of my talk is the following. This is the word of rags. On the left, or on the right, I'll put the vast behavior. So where I put out of Fn, I will see also head. This is here. On the left part, I put the non-vast, so the skimpy part. Um, and here I have GL three Z L N Z for N greater than three. Okay, that's here. And the question is okay, where does the frontier go? Okay, what's the boundary between those two behaviors? And um, okay. Well, that's our theorem. Uh, we describe the boundary. <coughs> theorem. The following. So it says that the following are equivalent. Uh, the first thing is a combinatorial condition on the graph. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll make it precise ju ju right after. Then if this condition on the graph holds, then out of A gamma, well, if and only if out of A gamma uh, involves all finite groups. And equivalently, this also holds if and only if out of a gamma is SQ universal. And this also holds if and only if out of a gamma uh, virtually has many quasimorphisms. Okay, so, so the I can describe the, the precise combinatorial condition. Uh, so it means that for 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 the group to be, you know, uh, Vast in this way, gamma has um, that's infinitely if gamma, gamma has three equivalence class I, I need more space, okay. What is the condition star? Gamma lies star if only if 
Um, so I, I, need to, I, I, I will uh, need to explain the terms I'm using here. So if gamma has a free equivalence class, of size at least two, or gamma has an abelian equivalence class of size exactly two, or uh, gamma has a fill separating intersection so these are features that were uh, already used before uh, in the study of uh, of uh, automorphisms of rags so what are what are them so uh, to to explain so I need to explain this. What are those equivalence class, and what's a separating intersection of links? Okay. Um, well, this is related to a, a generating set of uh, the, the the group of automorphisms, and uh, so which involves several kinds of, of automorphisms. And the first one, first kind is called a transvection. So what is a transvection? That's a particular kind of automorphism. So you take two vertices, x and y and gamma, which are distinct, and that's an automorphism that sends x to x, y, and it fixes all the rest. So this does not always uh, define an automorphism uh, of the rag. It depends on some combinatorial condition. Okay. Um, this is an automorphism if and only if. So either the link of x is contained in the link of y. So what is this link? So we, we are in this graph gamma. Okay? The link of, an, of a vertex is a set of neighbors. Okay? So you want that every neighbor of x be a neighbor of y. That's because you want that if you send x to x, y, x commutes with many elements, and then you want, uh, you, you want that x, y commutes with the same uh, elements at least. Uh, so that uh, this defines a, a homomorphism. So either, or, uh, that, so that, that implies that X and Y don't commute, and when they commute, the, the right way of putting it, it's a variant, it's just that the star of X is a star of Y, the star of X is just a link together with X. Okay, it's the, so the, the link is a sphere of radius one, the star is the ball of radius one. Okay? And so you see that this is, um, this is, uh, this is actually a, a, an ordering, or at least a pre-ordering. Uh, and so we say, in this case, we say that x is less or equal than y. Okay? And uh, I, I, corresponding to this partial pre-ordering, there is an equivalence relation. Okay, and And that's the same as, as uh, either they have the same link or they have the same star. Okay, maybe I don't write this. So examples. Example. Uh, Uh, 
So maybe I put x1 or x2, x3, x4. Uh, and here oh, I want to add some more edges, y1, y2, y3. And those guys form an equivalence class. They have the same link. And, and those guys form an equivalence class. They have the same star. And this is a free equivalence class because the, the elements don't commute with each other. They generate a free group in the rag. And here it's a Nabelian equivalence class because they generate a Nabelian group in uh, the rag. So that's the definition of the two words which are here. So a free equivalence class is something like that. It's a set of elements which don't commute with each other, but you can transvect the element onto the others. And a Nabelian equivalence class is the same, but the element commutes together. That's a feature. Now, I need to uh, explain the second point in the definition, which is separated, separating intersection of links. Um, okay. so this is related to uh, another type of um, automorphism, which is uh, called a partial conjugation. What is a partial conjugation? Well, it's a, it's a notomorphism. Um, uh, X, Y. Um, define as follows. For all uh, X in X, X is mapped to, um, to a conjugate, and you conjugate by Y. And for the other elements, you just don't do anything. That's a partial conjugation. It's a conjugation on some piece and uh, identity on the rest. Okay, so here again, for this to, um, to work, uh, for this to be an automorphism, you, you need some conditions. And the condition is... Um, If X is, is a, a union of connected components of the graph minus whatever commutes with Y, which is a uh, star. And um, Actually, uh, you could also add some more elements in the star of y because if you're, if, well, if an element is in the star of y, it's exactly the, the elements which commute with, um, with, uh, with y. So, so those two definitions agree on, those, on this set. Okay. Okay, so that's an exercise to check this. So, I mean, plus some elements of y, which, which doesn't change the, the, the definition of, of the automorphism itself. Okay. And now, separating intersection of link is some, some, is some condition that, that, um, that appears when you want to understand wh when those, those guys commute or don't. Uh, so... So here you, uh, you say that uh, x, y, z is a separating intersection of links if the following holds. Um, uh, the link of x intersection is the link of y. Uh, separates Z 
from x y and you also want that uh, x y and z don't commute okay, so the picture is as follows you have x and y they they have uh, Uh, something in common in their link. Let me have uh, some some other stuff. And there is a, a connected complement of the complement of this intersection. So that's the intersection of the links. And here, you have the set. And what you can easily check. Uh, in this case, if you take call uh, big Z this component, well, C the C X Z and C Y Z don't commute and generate a free loop. In out. Okay. And so, in fact, um, there is a theorem by uh, Gutierrez, uh, Gott, and Juan uh, saying uh, that, in fact, that, that um, the group generated by all those partial conjugations is uh, abelian if only if. All, all um, partial conjugations mute in out of a gamma if only if there is no seal. So that's the only source of no, non commutation. All right, so I think, um, so there is, for instance, uh, a, a theorem one, one can state with those definitions that's due to, uh, to day, and which, 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 um, which uh, analyze which, which of those automorphism groups of rags contain free groups. And that's if and only if there is a seal or there is one of those equivalence classes of size two, or at least two, so here there would be a, a two, um, because you are, then you have also many uh, transvections that don't commute with each other. Um, all right. So uh, the the point with these um, these particular automorphisms is that, in fact, they form a, a generating set of um, a generating set of a finite indexer group of the group of automorphisms. So the theorem by Lorenz. Uh, Transvections and partial conjugations finite index subgroup, which I will denote by out zero. So in fact, you can be explicit uh, about what's missing. What's missing is just that there are automorphisms that may come from uh, 
permutation of the graph, you know, automorphism of the graph. And then maybe also there are also, a, uh, there are also autom automorphisms that fix every generator but just send one generator to its inverse. That, that's what's missing. So one may wonder, so in the theorem I just erased, uh, skillfully, uh, one may wonder what those three um, properties which are rather different, like uh, involving all finite groups, a profinite property, SQ universality is uh, something related to quotient, uh, quasimorphisms uh, is um, uh, I mean something different. So they, in general, they are not related. Okay. But here, the, uh, some, something happens. I mean, there is this coincidence. The, the, the boundary between uh, the, the behavior for those three properties is the same boundary. Okay. So this can be explained by, um, by the following uh, uh, trichotomy, which we prove. So one of the following holds. So uh, one A is uh, that maybe out zero of A gamma uh, maps onto out of F N or SGL, well, SL. That's a, that's a first possibility, okay. For a second possibility, 1B, is that uh, well, out of a gamma large. Okay. In fact, uh, this this one implies this one. So I, I can, yeah. well, not not exactly, but so I could have uh, forget it, about it. And there is two, which says that um, out zero of a gamma uh, fits in a short exact sequence. So here you have a polycyclic group. Here, so you have here you have a product of L and I. And the NIs are uh, at least three. Okay, so so, I, so either so here that's what happened if the combinatorial condition uh, holds. And this is what happens if it doesn't hold. Um, so, and here, this is all right. So, it's fairly, I mean, it, it's fairly easy to deduce the theorem from this. I mean, because, well, if your group maps onto out of Fn or into SL to Z, or if it's large, then it satisfies all those vastness properties that I mentioned. And if it uh, does not, 
then we, you have this short exact sequence. And because all those, the, the, the group SLN, Z that appear here are, are higher ranks, so they, are this, they have this n greater than three, that it's, it's also an exercise to show that because those one are, are not vast, they are skimpy, and this one is just polycyclic, then this property you know, lifts to this, this property, for instance. So it can't be, for instance, uh, I don't know which one is your preferred. It can't be uh, SQ universal. Yes? No, 1B implies 1A. Sorry? Well, it's not, uh, because it's a nor. It's, it's not known whether, yeah, take, take out of F4, it's not known whether, so it, it fits here, but it's not known whether it's large or not. So large, meaning, you know, it virtually maps onto F2. Oh, F, yeah. Okay, so, but why? Okay, so the proof is, is, is really, uh, is really uh, combinatorial and algebraic, doesn't evolve. So there is, there is a, a, a sequence of works by, by Chan and Vokman for constructing uh, outer spaces for uh, these groups, and, um, and uh, we, don't, we don't rely on that um, at all. We, we, so w w the, the method we use is, um, is more... Uh, Algebraic, as you see, it's, it's about mapping onto uh, other groups or, or about proving this short exact sequence here. So uh, let me maybe uh, explain uh, more precisely what's going... Well, yes, the, the proof of, uh, of this trichotomy and um, the relation with a, with a combinatorial condition. So, uh, this, okay, uh, yes, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that's a direct product of uh, SL and Z, and the NIs, all the NIs are at least three. And you, you can be more specific, in fact. Uh, in fact, uh, let me add some, some comments, color comments. So that in, in fact here, the NIs, that's the size of the equivalence classes. Okay, but I, of, so I, yeah. But okay, maybe this, this is not um, this is not understandable uh, because I didn't uh, explain the relation with with this with this. So one a will hold if if there is a free equivalence class of size at least two, then you will have a map here. you'll get this, this thing. And if there is an abelian equivalence class of size two, then you will get this part. Okay? That's this and this. Now, this will happen if uh, there is uh, a seal and uh, one A does not hold. This, so what we prove is that in this case, if there is uh, the seal and is, if uh, we don't have any uh, free equivalence class of size N, essentially, then we prove the largeness of the, of the and so, in the remaining case, what we know is that all, all uh, equivalence class, they, they are abelian, and they, are, they have size at least three. So the NIs are the size of this equivalence class. They are all at least three, and we have this uh, short exact sequence here. 
Okay. So, so the proof consists in saying well, there is a first proof one a. It's, it's a simple observation. Uh, it's the fact that if if uh, gamma has an equivalence class of size, say, n, then uh, uh, this group out zero of a gamma maps onto more room. Maps onto either out of Fn or onto Sl and Z, according to uh, to the fact that the equivalence class can be uh, free or belly. Okay. Okay. So. Similar observation that had been made by uh, Charlie and Volkman, for instance, but in a in a more uh, restricted uh, case. But that's very easy observation, and it proves it proves uh, part one a of the alternative. Okay. Now about two. So you have to prove that if there is, uh, so that, that's in the, in, the, in the remaining part, so you, you have to, to prove that, so you assume that there is no zero and all equivalence classes Abelian. And then what you do is you look, you look at the, the representation uh, corresponding to the uh, abelianization. So you have um, a map from out of A gamma to um, out, let's say out zero. Uh, L size of gamma. That so just abelianize uh, the the right angle art group and look, look at the action of the abelianization. Okay, so this has a kernel and uh, which is called a uh, like A A A A I A. And it's it's uh, uh, resolved by uh, by uh, Wade and by uh, is it Day uh, that um, yes by Day and Wade. This is this is generated by two things: by partial conjugation and some. Um, uh, uh, but uh, commutator transactions. And in this context, well, you, you, you just check that because all equivalence classes are abelian, these are all trivial. Because, because of this. And so there, you remain to, uh, to understand that, that so the, the kernel is really generated by partial conjugations. And so in fact, uh, and um, I told you this result, which is skillfully here, uh, by uh, uh, Gutierrez, uh, Picot, and uh, Rain, that uh, this is abelian, because there is no seal. So this, this really is abelian in this case.
But what's the image? The image is very easy to, um, to understand. The image, it, it's, um, it's uh, it, it, the image here, it's uh, made of block triangular matrices. And on the upper blocks, there could be something or nothing, depending our, depending on whether there, um, ah, okay, I I didn't say the sizes. I mean, all these blocks, the blocks correspond to the equivalence classes because that's where the elements can transvect on the other. So these, these are the size of the equivalence classes. And here, what's here, that, that, that's uh, um, so, some equivalence class that can be transvected on the other, but not conversely. And so, uh, okay, we're, we're, so it's about whether some equivalence class is larger than the other or not. Okay, so you, you really, the, um, the image is, is described completely uh, explicitly. It's a group of uh, uh, triangular uh, matrices, and so uh, it's, uh, and, the, and those NIs here, so the, so here you, 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 you have a, like a nilpotent or unipotent part, and the, the, the diagonal part gives you this, this product of the S, L, N, I, Z here. So that's really um, uh, too. to And uh, so the main, the, the main point maybe is, is what, what happened uh, e here. If there is a seal and uh, there is, uh, and one A doesn't hold, so if there's no free equivalence class. So here, so in case 1B, um, so there is a seal, but all equivalence classes are abelian. This is enough. So then what, the, what we prove is that there is another seal, so x prime, y prime, z prime, um, on, on which the, the group, we, we have to find, we have to find some, some, some morphism to, to, I mean, to, to a large group, and that's what, what, what we, we're going to do. Uh, so search that, now zero of a gamma is mapped onto, uh, well, not onto, uh, to a subgroup of, of the, the group they, they generate. So that's generated by the equivalence class of x prime, the equivalence class of y prime, and z prime, okay, which is, Out of some Z A, triple Z B, okay. So in some sense, we, I mean, so we have to do some combinatorial analysis to see what what, what can happen, and we 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 see that if we take in some sense a, a smallest seal, then we we get we can uh, we can construct this map here. Okay, and then. So here the map is not onto in general. Um, so what we here we, we use uh, two things. So in, well, it's not onto, but there is we essentially understand a generating set okay, by the by you know, from the generating set we have for, for out of a gamma, and so there are two options. Um, so either we can we, we can uh, we can completely describe the image uh, 
as a, as an, uh, well, a free product, an alchemical free product. Product uh, with, as an explicit, okay. And from which we, it's easy to see. Hard. And in the other case, so we use a we use a, a representation that's um, that's uh, re related to the representation used by uh, Grunwald and Lubotsky to prove that out of F3 is large. So here we have three factors, and um, that's important. Uh, and uh, it should it's the same three as out of F3, and so we use. Uh, some Grunwald Lubotsky representation. And we get, so, the, so that's on the, the homology of uh, index two subgroup of this group. Okay, and this homology splits um, in two factors, and one of them, uh, because because of the action of this group of of uh, order two, so there is a there is a you know a, a, a fixed space and an anti fixed space, and this one has dimension two. And from this, we get, we get a morphism. Uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, L, to Z from a finite index of Okay, and uh, so in, in, we have to prove the, the image is large enough, it, it's, uh, it will be virtually free, and when it's not, well, then we can rely on this, on this case. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.